Hi everyone, thanks for tuning into my channel. So today's reading is you versus the other person, the other woman, the other man. So if you're in a third party situation or a love triangle, this is a comparison of you versus that person. How your person feels for you, thinks about you versus how they think about that other person and what the likely outcome is as well as some guidance um, from your guides. We're also going to look what, at what energy the love interest, who is in the middle of all this, what energy they're coming across in. Before I, I give you your options, I'm going to go ahead and let some of my readers um, who watch my channel know that there is um, a client named Violet Kwanowska who likes to order readings and then report to her bank that she never received them. So just do not accept a reading request from Violet Kwanowska with a K. So she's 56 years old, still hasn't learned not to cheat or steal, and I did comment about this on my um, community page, so just fair warning, this person is not scrupulous. She admitted to me in her emails that she was happy with the reading that she received it, and I saw her watch count was like four or five, so she watched it multiple times, and then decided that she was going to get around um, PayPal and PayPal's protection of sellers by claiming to her bank that she never received the reading, so she basically cursed herself and... Um, that is unfortunate. You know, if I were a lesser reader, I might actually um, use some of the very unscrupulous and shady um, information that she shared with me to um, to hold her accountable. She ought to be careful. But for my fellow readers, just letting you know, you know, Violet Kwanowska, don't accept a reading request from her unless you want to, unless you want to get stolen from. So sorry for the unpleasant unpleasantness, everyone. Um, but you know. If you steal from me, I will call you out on my video. Um, unfortunately, that's the way of the world. If there's no other recourse for me to take, then that's what I'm going to do. So, um, Fair pay for, for fair work, that's what I always say. So, Back to the reading. What's really important here is this pick a card reading for today. You versus the other woman or man and a comparison of, of those energies. So go ahead and think about your person, the person that you're involved with. Cards are all pre-shuffled. That's just the way that I felt like doing it this week. And so, let's go. And welcome option one. Thanks for tuning in. So I'm going to lay out the cards that represent how your person thinks and feels about you. They think and feel that you're a prosperous person, perhaps a business person, or have the potential to be. Um, I don't think they're feeling like they're getting a lot of love for you right now, or, or if they do, um, you're not really focused on love, you're focused on more on your stability, work, home, or security. Could be that you are involved in um, another relationship, perhaps some of you are married as well, take what resonates. I'm reading for a lot of different people, so part of the reading might resonate, part of it might not. But if you are drawn to this video, likely there's a message for you. Um, I am seeing that they think that um, if you are in a marriage or a, a live-in situation with another partner, or just living with um, friends or family, that your home situation is um, is unstable for some reason okay so I'm gonna give an overview of of the cards and then get in deeper my regular subscribers know how I go okay we will be looking at the outcome of each um, option as well in case I didn't say so and your person's energy towards <clears throat> towards this third party situation is the hero or heroine in reverse and the saboteur in reverse. So this person might be a Leo, might have that in their chart or would have those traits. I'm just getting that feeling. This card um, could, can say that, is saying that to me. The shadow attributes of this card is escapism and a false sense of heroism. So this is somebody who does things, you know, to get patted on the back to be perceived as a hero, at least in their own mind. Um, and they do this in part to escape from, you know, the things they don't like about themselves in their life. So they're kind of playing a role, kind of like a childlike energy when the kid dresses up in a cape and pretends like he's Superman or she's Superwoman. Um, so... Yeah, readings are never gender specific. Apply the pronouns that's correct for your situation, but this is your person. So they feel like they're like a, a false hero with regards to uh, this third party situation. And they're also sabotaging something here with the shadow attribute of the saboteur card being induces self-destructive behavior or the desire to undermine others. So um, right off the bat, we're getting sort of a, a, 
and immature energy from this person as being self-destructive is not healthy and certainly trying to undermine others perhaps in order to appear like a hero those are not immature qualities and their feelings and thoughts towards the third party that they're involved with make sure these are all in the right direction Yeah, this person really needs to feel like they're large and in charge and authority figure. And I feel like they can feel this way with the third party because um, they feel understood by the third party because the third party is somebody who is just as fickle non and non-committal as they are. Perhaps this third party doesn't want a commitment or is singing that song, playing that game, saying that they don't want a commitment. Um, and it allows your person to escape from the work that they have to do on themselves. They should be um, taking time to learn who they really are so they can grow up, but instead they're avoiding that. And I feel like they um, they don't get a lot of rest when they're with this third party. So it's, um, you know, take that how that resonates. Um, I am getting some, some toxic energy, some sexual energy, but also um, a feeling that this person makes them feel like the boss and the connection, whether they actually are or not. Um, I'm even getting that perhaps your, you know, your person bullies this person to a sense, but they don't feel a spiritual connection with them. They just feel like this other person understands how to handle them, and that's to like sort of feed their ego and let them be non-committal, right in and right out, be fickle and flirtatious, and um, help them to avoid doing their inner work. Okay, so put some cards up for you to see here. This represents your person, like I said, and their feelings towards you coming across as that uh, king of pentacles so you know uh, you might be a male you might be a female most of the people who watch my channel are are females but take it how it resonates and this is earth sign energy so it could be you know that your taurus leo i'm sorry taurus leo taurus leo maybe this person is a leo that came through again or you have it in your chart but anyways earth signs virgo capricorn and taurus um we've got water on the board as well with that um Knight of Cups in reverse, and that's Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, and then some more Earth with that Ten of Pentacles in reverse, and that's where I was saying that um, your person's thoughts and feelings towards you are that that um, you're not on the same page right now. I feel like they feel like you are not amused with them at present, um, that you're not amused with them or you're not amused with your current living situation. Um, perhaps they have had you waiting for a long time because the pentacles can talk about um, time passing things happening in divine timing and we did get the divine timing card as a clarifier for these cards so perhaps you know that's why you're not amused with this muse card in reverse okay they feel like you know at once they could um, look at you for sort of some inspiration I, I feel like this is talking more about yeah, like I said, that you're just not amused with the amount of time that it's taking for this connection to get going or to to come together, to get committed, because you're coming across very mature energy with that king of, with that king of coins uh, card. That you're somebody that <clears throat> is secure in yourself, whether financially or just in like your foundation as a person. You're probably a very practical person, regardless of your sign, regardless of your gender, and you probably have some command or strength and stability to your personality as well. So you might be someone really focused on work and uh, home, like I said, but I get the sense that other people look up to you, that you're kind of like a touchstone for people in your life, and that you represent to this person a mature and stable connection, although they're not mature enough to handle it at this time, I'm getting, um, that you are somebody who's very supportive, and perhaps you know have been supportive with this person up till now, but you're not amused with the length of time that it's taking for this connection to really get going. So... Um, I feel like this person might be looking at you, um, really, really spirit, this is the way you want to tell me this, uh, as a cash cow, I'm sorry, that's the way it came through, I've got blunt, blunt guides evidently, um, I don't feel like they only, you know, look at you for what you can give them materially. I feel like they do have a lot of passion for you with the passion card here. There's insane, insane chemistry between the two of you probably do have a lot of fun, but I think that for those of you who resonate with having like 
money or your stuff together or a good career or a job or if you're perceived this way by this person that that is a factor in their feelings towards you so just so that you know okay but you do represent a mature and stable relationship to this person however with that ten of coins you know in reverse I feel like there's something going on here um, in your home environment that might be throwing your usual stability off so with you as a person you have a strong foundation but something about uh, this connection uh, particularly if you live with this person or if you live with someone else like I said is unstable bringing instability into your life there's stagnation in the connection here with that ten of pentacles in reverse it could be um, that this person feels like this connection has stagnated because of the length of time that has taken while they're playing hero or heroine to this other person over here and sabotaging their own um, their own inner healing and their own evolution um, by not completing the cycle with this other person you know while they're doing all of that this connection has stagnated and so you know I feel like there have been frustrations and disagreements with regard to the connection and how you guys handle the ins and outs of the connection the responsibilities of it um, and if you are you know, like your finances are involved in any way there's arguments about that probably some kind con of contention about that as well it could be that um, you are a parent um, some of you might have a child with this person share a child with this person so you might have um, discussions or arguments regarding money in terms of child support or responsibilities family responsibilities or something to do with children might be causing unhappiness in this connection or if not because if it's not related to this person then they perceive you as somebody that you know you're a family person so maybe you're very much involved with like the children of your family or the elders in your family and for that reason you know that puts a lot of responsibility on your shoulder and pressure on the household so take what resonates but I am getting overall this is about emotional baggage and old hurts that you know are potentially interfering with your happiness and I see that it is interfering with the happiness with that um, with that knight of cups in reverse because the knight of cups upright you know for a lot of you who know uh, watch my channel regularly you know that's a good card to get in the upright and love reading as it talks about receiving a message or a love offer a, a positive change of some kind happening happening in a connection but that positive change is not happening in this connection as it is stagnant at this time um, and it, have, it has to do with you know these conflicts that I just discussed so I think that this person feels like perhaps you are being indecisive now that you are no longer um, wanting to commit to this connection and if if things are going the way that I'm seeing them going it's understandable why you wouldn't want to commit to this person if they've got you in a third party situation and if they're not living up to their end of the bargain somehow then it makes sense to me that um, that you wouldn't have a lot of love for them right now right that you have some some emotional baggage is represented by that card by this card by both of these cards actually so um yeah i think they do view you as somebody who's kind of like um upset uh, with them perhaps due to some um, broken promises and like you're reassessing the situation looking at the pros and cons of it and whether or not it's worth sticking around or worth you know offering like you don't have any love to give anymore at this present moment because of the stagnation and um and your person is aware of this you know that, that this person is not you know who they seem I don't feel like this person knows who that you know who they are themselves and that that you're aware of that so you're not amused to the situation at once you know you might have viewed this person as amused somebody that you looked up to but you just didn't see your ships come in on the connection with this person so you're kind of changing your mind about that you're really like looking at the pros and the cons about this connection whether or not um, it's worth staying in probably being a bit critical or judgmental towards this connection and towards this person or at least they're feeling that way that's the energy that they're getting from you so um, I think this person feels like <clears throat> you know he's got had good intentions with you but he cannot fulfill them but um, really I just think that um, he's sort of you know being immature he still views himself through the eyes of you know the child of the per kind of person or, or man or woman that they wanted to be when they grew up so they had this image of who they would be in a relationship when they were an adult and they kind of view themselves still as this hero but really they're like a saboteur and a false hero so they're not seeing themselves you know uh, accurately so even though they think that their intentions have, with you are good and why would you be upset with them uh, why would you be judgmental towards them in reality it's just you know that they're not 
uh, they are not who they imagine themselves to be, and they really need to grow up and leave childhood fantasies behind, get real with themselves. But I'm getting, you know, likely there have been secrets and lies in this connection between the two of you, and uh, you're, you are conflicted as a result of this, and it's partially because, you know, commitment hasn't been an option up till now, and this person needs to stop dreaming and needs to get real. So let's look at, um, let's compare that to... their thoughts and feelings for this other person, for the third party. Yeah, the third party or your person might be a fire sign, particularly Sagittarius, might be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini, or an Aries with that um, Emperor card. So this is what I was saying, you know, that your person feels like this third party makes them makes them feel like a big man you know or a big woman like they're in charge because they tolerate this um non-committal energy of of that uh it's called the player card or we call it a lot of us call it the player card right that um knight of wands in reverse i think that um there are a lot of mixed messages you know that this person between there's, there's there's an understanding on your person's part with regard to this third party that they're gonna put up with stuff that you won't put up with you know and like I said before they feel understood by this person but there are there's still mixed messages in with regards to the communication between one another and if this person posts about this third party at all on social media, I feel like that's misleading. Or they put posts on social media to mislead this person. Um, thinking that it's going to help them to continue to be in this emperor energy with this, with this other person, with this third party. So there's deception on this side as well as fickleness and flirtatious. Flirtatiousness. And a lack of trust. But I feel like um, this third party still has like optimism towards this connection. They feel sad for the fact that what they don't have the partnership that they really want with your person. And they're sort of like planning and trying to figure out a way to get that and what steps to take next in order to move this forward with your person. But um, I feel like, you know, they're also in an in, in immature or unrealistic energy and have unrealistic or immature um, expectations regarding your person in this connection. So in that sense, they have that in common sort of like an immaturity to them. Um, I, I'm not getting, you know, that this is a spiritual connection with the fifth dimension card coming out clarifying, and that's in the reverse. So uh, fifth dimension would talk about them having communication um, on the astral plane in the fifth dimension where it would speak to a more... Um, spiritual connection. I'm not getting it as a very spiritual connection, if it is at all. There is understanding on the part of um, on, on the part of your person and this person. Your person feels understood by this person in the sense that, you know, like I said before, that they can behave the way they want to and still, you know, view themselves the way they want to be viewed as this hero when really they're not a hero at all because this other person, this third party puts up with more of their crap. Um, but also they understand how to manipulate this third party as well. And as a result of this, I don't see the cycle changing anytime soon with the cycles card in reverse. Because, um, you know, why should uh, why should your love interest change anything when they're getting to be this emperor, you know, in the eyes of this other person? So, um, yeah, they're definitely coming across as the emperor, somebody that's in their masculine power, in a position of leadership. They feel like they have some sort of success here, whether it be material or otherwise. Um status and materialism is is important to your person i'm getting for those this is resonating for if it doesn't maybe pick another option or another video but this is what i'm getting because we saw that they you know they looked up to you and recognized you and your potential with regard to like materialism and status but they also um feel like an emperor like feel like they're really living high on the hog with being with this other person because they allowed to manipulate this other person and get something out of them um Again, I don't feel like he, they, they, I'm not getting sort of this um, Knight of Pentacles in reverse energy where they're just taking the low road to get ahead. I think they, they don't view themselves that way. They still view themselves as this reversed heroine. 
um, or hero. So they don't view themselves as taking advantage, but I feel like that's what they are. But to the extent that this other person is allowing it to happen, because I feel like this other person does have some understanding of what's going on, but they're still sort of plotting and planning a way to get what they want out of, out of, out of your person. I'm definitely getting, you know, they, there are some self-destructive and undermining energies um, from your person for both of you, um, but also within this connection with this third party. That helps them to make them feel, you know, that they're they're more mature or more stable than they actually are, and that they have more going for them with regards to like money and status than they actually do. And I feel like, you know, money and status is more important um, to this person than anything really. Although I do get that, you know, passion is important to them as well. I do see passion between you and this person, and also between this other person and, and yours, but more like sort of um, because this other person allows your person to dominate them. So if he appears like he's being loyal to this third party, it's because of that, you know, this desire to dominate and this ability for this other part person uh, to let them do that in the understanding that if they let them do that, then, then they could have them in their life and potentially have a commitment or partnership with them in the future. So I really get the energy, you know, that they are wanting to continue to work on this other connection because of that reason, you know. Whereas your connection with this person um, shows up as being stagnant, um, the connection with this other person isn't as stagnant, but it's um, not stagnant because it, it's a bit toxic. And uh, so, yeah, it's a, little bit, it's a bit chaotic with that Four of Swords in reverse. Um, yeah, there's a definite need for there to be some healing of some, some old wounds here for your person to gain clarity or this third party to gain clarity and to work on themselves. And with the hammer card, I feel like um, they are going to work on themselves or they are working on themselves in some roundabout way with this other person. I feel like um, there's a potential that this um, could end with this third party. However, there's also a potential for it to come back around and for them to get back together because of um, this loyalty that they feel to one another because of the toxic dynamic that seems to work for both of them. However, they want to work on this. We already see the third party wants to work on this toxic dynamic and make it better. And I feel like um, your person, um, you know, if they gave up on this connection, they would have regrets. Um, because there is a part of them that really wants to work on the situation because they know that they're sabotaging the situation and they want to work on it. Okay. Yeah, I feel like this your your love interest wants to bring justice to this connection to this third party I'm getting. They don't want this connection to end, and if it has ended or if it does end, it'll be like temporary. And if they come back together, it'll be because they're wanting to work out some of the issues in the connection because of, you know, all the ways that it works for, for your person. And it's hard to compete with um, your person, particularly if they're masculine, if this other person makes them feel like an emperor, that's kind of hard to compete with, even if the other person is making them feel like an emperor by diminishing themselves. And so I don't feel like you want to do that. So while the outcome between the two of you is passion that you continue to have insane chemistry um, and that you like each other equally and that you like having fun together, you might continue to sleep with this person and have passion with them because that is mutual. I'm getting that for the majority of you. You know, there is still going to be... Um, some confusion in this connection like this person isn't going to totally give up on this third party even though their outcome is the hammer which talks about sabotage it also talks about re rebuilding uh, interrogation persistence and working on it so they're going to continue working on their connection for the reasons I described so I'm going to I got a card for you from your guides to give you some guidance regarding this third party connection option one and the card that you got was the judgment card it talks about the higher self 
So I'm going to go ahead and read the guidance, you know, from the book since that's a new a new deck, and it's also got really good um, wording and, and guidance in the book. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and if you don't want to listen to that, you can go ahead and click off and thank you, and if you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already, but I'm going to read um, from Judgment, and so this is card number 46, which breaks down to a 1. I think it's talking about that you're going to make the judgment that you need to put yourself first, up, first and foremost above this connection. If you're doing that, you need to continue doing that. <clears throat> the judgment card says, um, 46, talks about precision, rationality, analysis, and discernment. It says that this isn't a time to act um, under an imagined sense of urgency. Okay. Yeah. Keep your emotions from running away with you. Turn to your higher self, engage your power of reason, and trust your inclination to step away from the drama and, and, and intensity of the moment. Study and analyze all the factors of the situation and allow your higher self to guide you to the right end. Sleep on it tonight. Better yet, sleep on it for several nights. Then heed the higher self's message. Leave it alone and leave it to me for now. So that's where that divine timing comes, on, comes in with regards to this connection. So that's what I have for you. Uh, option one, thanks again for tuning in. I, and uh, Let me know in the comment section down below if this reading resonated. And I am taking a limited number of readings this week, so if you'd like one of those, um, details how to book are in the description box below. Thanks again for tuning in. Moving on to the next option. Welcome option two, those who chose the tinderbox soldier, number 11, ambition. So let's see um, how your person thinks and feels about you, option two. And then we'll compare that to how they think and feel about the third party. We've got the five of swords. They may have taken advantage of you. <coughs> Perhaps they drove you away. At the very least, there has been some... There's been a battle going on here. Um, they view you as somebody who's sort of been trapped in your own head. Perhaps you've listened to the advice of others to your own detriment, but you're coming out of that energy. You're starting to um, release yourself. And it could be because they broke your heart. We've got the Three of Swords here. For those that this resonates with, it looks like you're likely in separation from this person. And this person, you know, seems to think that, you know, you haven't been really focused or you're not that focused of a person or that you haven't been in the past because you've been wearing this blindfold with this Eight of Swords. But it's in reverse now, so it says that they're showing you coming out of that. And perhaps what helps you to come out of that is the separation the two of you are experiencing. Okay, so what cards are representing your person? For those who have chosen option two, your person is coming across as the monk nun. And so the monk nun is um, in the upright. That talks about the light attributes, selfless, devotion, single-minded dedication to spirit. So they might be a religious person, spiritual person, or at the very least just have very strong viewpoints or points of view. They might be systemic in the way that they... <clears throat> or systematic and, and rational in the way that they um, the way that they operate in their day-to-day -day life 
but they are coming across as somebody that gives of themselves and is very dedicated to their causes. So take that how that resonates. I'm reading for a lot of different people, so part of the reading might resonate, another part might not. But if you are drawn to this reading, there's probably a message in it for you. And this card um, actually got a second card that came out to represent your person, and it was the full card in reverse. So that's the shadow attributes. It says this person uses their sense of humor to wound rather than to liberate. So in other words, they um, you know probably say mean or sarcastic, snarky remarks, something like that. Because they use their humor to wound rather than liberate, and they deny their emotional truth. So it might be somebody who denies their emotional truth because they're too focused on... Um, you know, their causes or their belief system, whatever those belief systems might be. They might be a, a bit self-righteous, so they could wound you with their words, acting like they're joking when they're not, because they feel self-righteous. All right, let's see. Um, now, with this other person, this third party, I feel like... Um, they are waiting for the ships to come in with this third party. They feel there's some sort of a victory that they can have or that if they're with this person, um, that they will be supported by friends and family. There's a bit of ego with their feelings for this person and the connection could be more based in, in passion, but it is um, about your person wanting to see the work and the effort that they've put off in this connection with this third party. They want to see that pay off and they want to get something out of it. So even if... Um, Even if this person has tried to break it off with your person, I don't see that happening at present with that death card in reverse. Because I feel like your person communicates with them um, very assertively and aggressively. And I feel like perhaps my, for some of you, you know, sorry to say it, you probably don't want to hear it, but they use sex as a way to, sex and passion, as a way to sort of steer this connection with this third party. There is some unforgiveness between the two of them, however, and it might be related to family. They might have a family with this person, or um, they're wanting your person's wanting to get the support or approval of their family or this other person's family. I don't feel like they're really playing the hands that they've been dealt very wisely. I don't think there is the abundance here that your person thinks there is. Okay. So to get into it here, um, your person's thoughts and feelings towards you is the Five of Swords, the Eight of Swords in Reverse, and the Three of Swords. So really, I'm not getting a lot of emotion um, from your person at this time, and it could be because, like I said, you guys are in separation. Yeah, I don't know. I'm getting that for some of you, this person is viewing you as this person, this Five of Swords, that you took your your um, your heartache and walked away from this connection. That this person broke your heart, caused you emotional pain, so you took you like took you took that heartache and you walked away. Perhaps there was a decision that you needed to be made. Perhaps this person still wanted to fight with you, still wanted to engage you in their mind games or their arguments or this power struggle that that five can represent. Um, I get that they would want to do that in part to make a change to this connection to see if there's more to it um, than meets the eye. However, you had just had it because this person has broken your heart so many times or really broke your heart this one last time. And so you've just sort of walked away from the connection as a result of that. Because that Three of Swords energy is a really, you know, it's a really hard energy for anybody that follows tarot, you know, it's a heartbreak card. So you can see that on the card there's a heart with three swords in it. And, um, I don't think this person really expected you to walk away this time, but again, I feel like, you know, they just caused you so much sorrow that you really didn't feel like you had, um, any other choice but then to sever this connection or, or enter into a separation from this person because you found like this connection was meaningful that it would lead to something more but then it just lost its meaning to you you just needed to let it go because of something that they did apparently or something that happened between the two of you again it could just been the harsh words like i said the sarcastic r rude remarks that the the full card in reverse can represent 
or the self-righteous energy that I'm getting here from this person. Their desire to dominate the situation, to win at any cost, you know, say anything to hurt your feelings just to get the upper hand, which is an abusive energy, and it's a good thing that you walked away. If you're resonating with walking away, which I'm getting that it's you guys, uh, those who chose option two, or the ones that did, um, did the walking away from this connection. I feel like this connection left you very confused here with the refocus card in reverse and that eight of eight of swords in reverse. And um, they're viewing you or seeing you, thinking that you're that you're still confused whether you are or not. They, uh, maybe that you think that perhaps this connection is still worth salvaging, and your person thinks that you know that you're considering that there's a possibility that you could heal the gap in this connection. Um, but I think you're trying to decide, you know, whether or not you just want to move on from it instead. <clears throat> yeah, I feel like you were the chaser in this connection in the past. The chaser card came out in a codependent chaser in a codependent relationship, fear of abandonment issues. So you probably put up with more from this person than you really wanted to or needed to, although you didn't need to put up with anything from this person. Because I get that you're a very intelligent person. Um, you might be an air sign, uh, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, have those traits, but certainly coming out in this reading, I feel like now, you know, you've sort of taken your power back. Um, and you, you cut out the chasing <clears throat> because you were the one that walked away. This person wasn't on your side. So, um, you don't want to deal with somebody who's not going to be on your side. You don't want to deal with any confusion anymore, any ambiguity of not knowing how this person feels. You don't want to put up with their smart mouth. You don't want to um, put up with anything from this person after they've hurt you so badly. So, you've broken through this cycle or this this uh, effort on your part to be a chaser. Whether you meant to be that way or not, that's how this person, this person viewed you. And let's be honest, I feel like, you know, some of you did... Um, you know, chase this person more than would have been um, ideal. <clears throat> and that's when you were in this upright energy of feeling trapped, you know, trapped by yourself, your own worst enemy here. But since you're coming out of this now, this is a good thing. You're breaking through some barrier that you've built and you're changing the way you see and do things. And your person sees this or thinks this about you, that you've changed the way that you're doing things. You still might, you know, their ego tells them that perhaps you still want to heal this connection or that there's a way to heal it. But they also think that you are going against, you know, you're going against anybody or anything that's trying to control you and you're being your own person standing in your own power which is very good and um you are moving out of this energy of being unfocused to getting getting more focused, getting your head out of the clouds, getting your affairs in order with regards to your connection and life in general and if you feel you know tied to this person you know, it could have been because you were afraid of being alone or that you were unwilling to support yourself, but I'm not getting that you're in that energy anymore. But there was some restriction that bound you to this person. And I think that now, you know, you're starting to face up to what's really gone on in this connection. And if you've been listening to others' advice, you know, you're starting to listen to your own inner guidance instead more, more now. So let's see what your person thinks and feels. Get more in depth on what they think and feel about that other, that other party. And we've got the three of wands. So this is like fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, and we've got that, you know, two fire sign cards. I think no more than that. Your person feels passion towards this other person. Like I said, they put in effort in this connection. They're waiting for something to happen here. They're waiting to get the reward. This period of feeling victorious and being supported by others. Um, you know, they might have very serious feelings for this other person. Um, and if it's... However, uh, I think it's a lot to do with, like, sexual chemistry or passion with all of those wands cards. I don't think there's as much abundance in the connection as they would think it is. Because the abundance card came out in reverse and I was drawn to take it in reverse. Pretty much taking all the cards in reverse if they come out in reverse uh, today. And the hand of cards uh, came out as well in reverse, which talks about taking a chance or a risk. Being strategic and not showing your hand. 
So I feel like your person feel like this other person is a safer bet because they've already put in so much effort on the connection because they do have some chemistry um, and they have that in common. Not that you didn't have chemistry, but you're not coming across as having a lot of chemistry with this person at present. I don't know if you guys have been separated for a long time or not. The energy that you're coming across in here is more of this air energy as opposed to this fire energy. So with this person, they feel like it's a safer bet to be with this person. And they feel like they can be more open with them and... Um, And yeah, that's it's, that it's not as much of a risk. Even with this, um, with that death card in reverse, and I wonder what that death card in reverse is doing here. What it's really trying to say with regards to this connection with this other person. And it's saying that, you know, that um, perhaps that, <coughs> excuse me, there are some changes that need to be made. Um, with regard to this connection with this third party, but your person is not doing that out of fear, probably. It's probably out of fear that they're not making some necessary changes. So they're stuck in some sort of a habit or a pattern, and I think that pattern is being in third party situations, you know, and at present it appears to be that they're in a third party situation with you, <clears throat> or at least in an energetic sense, you know, if you guys are just, if you're in separation. I think there is some unhappiness and frustration um, with regard to this other connection. Something for which somebody needs to be forgiven and is not receiving forgiveness with that, with that forgiveness card in reverse. It could have something to do with the family. Like if this person has a family with this person, or if um, your person's family approves of this person more so than they approve of you then that might be why they're wanting to have this victory with this other person so they can be supported by family and friends by being with this person and garner some sort of forgiveness from their family members <clears throat> or even their friends. Getting some sort of forgiveness and some sort of approval seems to be high on the list of priorities for your person. Even if, uh, you know, because there does seem to be some sort of um, unhappiness in this, on, this side of the, on, the ta on the side of the table. So your person's being resistant in terms of um, changing something that they need to change. They're a fixed energy, you know, could be an Aquarius. We've got an air sign energy here, um, but it doesn't have to be. I'm just getting this energy of your person being fixed, not only with you, but also with this, with this other person. And um, I think that this can cause, you know, this third party some, you know, feeling sad as well. You know, bored or sad in the connection. And uh, it's causing your person to feel bored and sad as well because they're not doing things for the right reason. If they're doing it to gain approval or to win the support of family or friends or because they think it's going to get them more attention or because they're trying to get some reward out of the situation or if they're only in it because or primarily in it because there's a lot of passion or sex in the connection, you know, those are not um, the best re reasons to be in a love relationship. It's always better to be in a relationship because somebody, you know, you love and respect that person and they love and respect you in return. And I don't feel like the love is um, that abundant with that abund again with that abundance card being in reverse. So there is unhappiness here on the side st still and um, this feeling of grieving the end of a relationship and feeling unable to move on. So your person is uh, feeling like they're feeling a bit unable to move on from their connection with you. And that is affecting this connection with this third party. I think outwardly it looks like they're taking action to move forward with this third party but I feel like in the inside their heart is just not really in it like I said this is not um, based in abundance or love abundance and love are kind of the same thing and so with that abundance card being in reverse it's your person seeking to get something out of this they're they're in this connection like I said for ego reasons and stuff so if they are um, pushing this connection with this third party forward You know, I'm just getting that it's for 
the recognition that they feel that they'll receive, but they're not really willing to change anything that is needed to be changed in terms of the way they treat people and talk to people and the way that they function because, uh, and this is going to continue to lead to unhappiness for them. This isn't going to fix whatever they think it's going to fix, being with this person and pushing that third party connection forward. So this is the energy that I'm getting. So, you know, I did get a card from your guides for guidance for those who chose option two. And the ask your guides card that came out was restriction. So we did see some restriction here, you know, that I feel that you're getting out of with regard to this connection where you're no longer feeling bound to this person that you've actually even walked away. Most of you did sort of, you know, to move on, to get out of this sort of chaser energy, no longer be codependent, work on your, you know, whatever issues that you need to work on. So I'm going to read from the book on that, um, you know, what the guides have, what message the guides have for you. You know, you can click off now if you don't want to listen to that. You know, if you liked it, hit the like button, comment in the comment section down below if you feel drawn to, but let's see what the, what your guides have to say. So this is number 28, that breaks down to a one restriction. Again, talking about doing for yourself. The 28 could have um, some significant for you, some significance for you. So what this card is saying is, um, it's a card that talks about assumptions, rigidity, limitations, and prejudice. Your, your joy guides are tapping at your door, at your mind's door, hoping to open it and free you from the corner of any narrow um, or presumptuous thinking on your part that may be unwittingly back, backing you into a corner or that this person has made you feel back into a corner um, like it happened before you even realized it was happening so don't fall in the trap but if you did fall into a trap of running on too many assumptions um, or operating on an unexampled operating on unexamined preconceived notions, you quickly eliminate all your options leading you to a damned if I do, damned if I don't cycle of frustration. Okay, and this is the damned if you do, damned if you don't. This is the lose-lose situation card here that your person um, is thinking about you, that they put you in a lose-lose situation. So your joy guides playfully remind you to step back and notice where you're stuck. Perceptions might be attracting such frustration. They remind you that you're not stuck, but your thinking, but your thinking may be stuck. So stop your mental movie and take a commercial break. It's time for a fresh look and a new viewpoint on things. The best way to achieve this is to treat yourself to a heavy dose of humor and let it break through your unbearable dilemma. Your joy guide's counsel is, as always, the situation may be critical but not serious. Join them in reviewing the situation and laugh your way forward. So the way to move forward from this connection is, is, is humor. Your guides are guiding you to you know, have a sense of humor about the situation. This is a lot of heavy energy on your side here. Um, and yeah, so if you want to take the advice of the, uh, the joy guides on that, I think it sounds like good advice. Again, thank you again for tuning in. Option two, I'm going to move on to option three. I hope that resonated and you got some value out of the reading. If you need a personal reading, I am taking those, you know, just a limited number. And details how to book are in the description box below. All right, welcome to option three. So this is the you versus them reading, you versus the other person in this connection, this love triangle reading. So you chose uh, number 28, fairies, words, okay? It's the card that you chose. Something to do with words, and the number 28 might have some significance. Also, option two had uh, 28 come up in one of its cards. And so, you know, you might check out option two. You can watch as many or as few of these videos as you want to find what resonates. Sometimes there are messages that cross over between options. So regarding how your person feels towards you, let's look. They have warm feelings for you. They might feel that you're an optimist and it looks like they want a new start with you. 
Perhaps they owe you an apology as well. You might be a fire sign, Leo, Sagittarius, or Aries, but don't have to be. You could also be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini. I think they see you coming out of a period of grief. So it looks like they owed you an apology, and for them to owe you an apology, they might have said some harsh words to you, or there might be an argument. Something was done that they owe you an apology for, but they see you picking yourself up and being in this Queen of Staffs energy. Somebody that is sexy and beautiful, commanding and authoritative, you know, funny and respected. I think, I think that they really, yeah, they definitely really like you. Um, they want to go on a date with you. They want to flirt with you. They feel like, you know, they look at you and they feel romance in their, in their hearts. And so, yeah, they definitely, they definitely like you. I feel like there is a need for a new start in this connection, though, because I don't see that this connection has ascended or is ascending at present. You might be doing your own thing. Um being in your queenly energy, not really worried about this person because they hurt you. Um, I will get deeper into that, but first I'm going to look at your person's energy towards this third party situation. Your person's coming across as the victim, showing up as the victim here. So they came out in the upright, that's the light attribute, which says um, that this victim, this victim mentality is preventing them from letting, letting themselves be or, okay, the wording on these cards is not helpful. <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> I'll read it as it's, as it's written. It says that prevents you from letting yourself be, be victimized or victimizing others. Okay? So this person is in sort of a defensive energy. But I don't feel like it's um, in, a, in a toxic way or a negative way. I think that they just want to, whatever they've done or whatever they're doing right now, it's to prevent themselves from letting themselves be victimized, which suggests that they have been victimized or felt victimized in the past by someone. And they also are just trying to refrain from victimizing others. So it looks like they owe you an apology, and if they owe you an apology, then they feel like they they probably feel they victimized you in some way. And so whatever they're doing right now is an attempt not to do not to do that again. I feel like they're at a stalemate with this other person, the third party. They might be trying to keep the peace because they feel like if they don't, you know, things could go very badly with this other person. Yeah, if they're stagnating, um, if you know them to be stagnating, things not really moving with your person, I feel like it's because they're being their own worst enemy right now. They fear the criticism of others. They just feel like they can't move forward because if they rock the boat, then something bad might happen. They're in fear. Fear of destruction. They're trying to prevent some destruction from happening here. They feel they will overcome these obstacles. That's interesting. Okay, so I'm going to start with this side. Yeah, with this third party, they're, they're showing up the seven of coins uh, in reverse energy. So that your person or the third party could be a Virgo, Capricorn, or Taurus, have that energy. But also we've got air sign energy here with the two of swords. <clears throat> and the eight of swords came out as well. So normally with that um, Seven of Pentacles, it talks about, you know, working on your money and focusing and trying to grow a situation. But with it being in reverse, it says that your person feels a lot of anxiety here. They, they feel impatience and they're concerned about their losses. Like I said, there's some destruction that they're trying to prevent from happening with that destruction card in reverse. Maybe they feel if they end it with the third party that this third party will go fatal attraction on them. I'm joking, but only sort of. Like, there's this feeling of fear here. I think more it's not that they're afraid necessarily of this person, like, physically harming them or harming them some way. I think that they're more afraid of um, of the ending itself and what you know, losses that could, could happen. You know, a blow to their ego, a blow to what they have built with this other person however small that might be there's something that they've established with this person 
that they are not wanting to end, you know, they just, it, whenever something ends, even if it ends for the better, there's still a sense of loss around that. That's just human to feel a sense of loss around something that you invested energy in. So this does have your person and anxiety about this connection. And I feel like, you know, the, um, the, the person that they're involved with is also feeling anxiety as well. Like that's mutual. In fact, that's the only, you know, fear and anxiety are the two, um, strongest mutual feelings or emotions that I'm getting between, between your person and this third party. Uh, a lot of this has to do again with like feeling like they might not reach their goal with regards to this connection and they're worrying about, you know, not living up to their own expectations or the expectations of others here. I feel like they know that they need to complete this situation with this third party, but they're procrastinating. They're just not inspired to do it because of fear. I think they have a lot of distrust, you know, towards this other person um, and uh, what's going to happen when they end it with this other person. Maybe they even feel that this other person, this third party, has been disloyal or unfaithful to them. But take what resonates, you know, this is a general reading, so some parts might resonate with you, some parts might not. Um, if you find that completely doesn't resonate, feel free to choose another option or another video. But if you were drawn to this video, it's probably for a reason, there's probably a message in it for you. This person might even be married to this other person, and that's why there's so much at stake if they end it. Which, you know, could account for the deep anxiety and, and procrastination I'm seeing here. But they do feel suspicious towards this other person. Like they don't trust that that uh, things will go the right way if they end it with this person, whatever the right way is for them. You know, whether their <clears throat> suspicions are valid or not, this is how they feel. They feel insecure and they end, and they feel a loss. You know, like I said, even if it's something that they want to end, they still can feel a loss about, you know, the fact that this connection is ending and that the affection that they once had for this person, you know, is dwindling or that the other person is... Um, their affection, like the third party's affection towards your person is dwindling. Yeah, I feel like your person intuitively senses that there's something that they don't know about uh, the third party's feelings towards them, and that puts them in doubt. And I feel like, you know, there is the reason, part of the reason why this connection with third party is ending is because the third party is also, you know, wanting it to end, having a, a diminished feeling towards your person. So, um, you know, this is ending here with this third party, but I, I feel like, you know, like I said, your person is resisting those, those endings because of the change in the, up, the upheaval that will occur, you know, but regardless, the universe is going to cause this connection to end. And it could be that this person, this third party found out about you or your person found out about the third party having an affair. Something sudden happened I'm getting here that has destroyed, you know, a happy home or, uh, a situation that had the potential in your person's opinion to be a happy home and like there were warning signs here for both of them and they I don't feel like I feel like they're not listening to those warning signs even at now they're not listening to those warning signs so your person is at risk of having like a bigger disaster to deal with you know from the ending of this third party connection than they would if they would just honor the, the warning signs and do something about it now you know But instead, they're allowing themselves to be trapped in fear with this Two of Swords and this Eight of Swords, which both talk about being trapped in your head, being trapped in anxiety and in fear. And um, the Two talks about, you know, you know, just just not wanting to see the truth. Both of those cards talk about not not wanting to see the truth of the situation. Your person, I feel like they are needing to get in touch with their intuition. I think they are getting more in touch with their intuition. I think they are preparing for the end of this in their own way. I'm not sure it's going to be enough to counteract, you know, the level of destruction that's going to occur in their life uh, if they don't start, you know, addressing the situation in the ending and wrapping it up. But they are addressing it in their own way, trying to find balance in this conflict with this third party in making a decision here. And... Um, you know, listening to both, both their head and their heart, your person's head and, and heart, you know, and I feel like, <clears throat> yeah, 
you know, there there might be some small part of them that's in denial and wants to, yeah, I'm getting denial. They, 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 they're, there's still potential to resolve their differences. They really just have major differences in perspective, how they see things. And again, there's this sense that there has some, been some sort of infidelity or something, um, at the very least, a, a lack of affection between the two of them now. But there might be this, you know, belief on your person's side or a sense that, um, that they, that they could still salvage this in some way, or at least, you know, not salvage the connection, but at least prevent um, the worst from happening. Because like we said, your person really feels strongly about not being a victim. They want to prevent um, themselves from, from being victimized. And it's got them into, you know, if they can stay in this energy of being overly protective, I feel like they're going to, they're going to be their own undoing, you know, their own worst enemy. And um, they need to get out of denial here about the situation. You know, they don't need to know the answers to whatever questions they have. They just need to, to start taking action and stop being their own worst enemy here. So they, they can stop feeling, so they can stop feeling trapped. Because by feeling trapped and procrastinating, they're actually contributing to the problem. They're actually manifesting this destruction for them, to themselves, contributing to the problem, you know. Um, Maybe they have this unrealistic expectation that they can get out of this this third party connection completely unscathed, and that's unrealistic. Particularly if they've been with this person for a while, or if it's been like a commitment. How, however enmeshed their life is with this third party, you know, the more enmeshed you are with someone emotionally or materially, the harder it is to get away from it. You are going to incur some losses. They, by you, I mean them, right? They they are going to. It's unrealistic to think that they're not going to. So they need to change their attitude about this situation I'm getting. They need to change their attitude, stop being in fear so they don't manifest this destruction that they so desperately want to avoid. But I, the good news is that the outcome with this is the ascending card. So they're going to transcend their obstacles. Some way or another, they're going to learn. And they're going to enter a new phase of their life where they can prepare for union outside of this third-party connection. Likely prepare for union with you since you're the one in question. But they are going to get out of this, their current circumstances. They are going to rise above their problems. And begin a new phase, because this third party connection is ending. So they're gonna they're gonna begin a new phase. And regarding your person's feelings towards you, we've got the um, page of staffs. That also talks about a new phase in a relationship or um, a new relationship in general. So maybe some of you have never been technically with this person. This is talking about the potential of receiving a communication or an offer, something small to begin with um, to get your connection going, your relationship started here. Because they're viewing you as the queen of staffs. Queen of staffs, very positive energy, and they're seeing you in a very high light, you know, very attracted to you and have a lot of respect for you. Although, you know, they may need to owe you an apology for something with that seven of uh, swords in reverse, you know, likely they do need to owe you an apology if for nothing more than putting you in a third party situation. I don't know if they lied to you about being involved with someone else or not. Um, I suppose it'd be different, you know, for everybody, but for each of you, but there is something that they feel that they owe you an apology for. And so there, I think that, you know, with them seeing you in that, in that queen of wands energy, that it's most likely that they're going to do that because they think that, you know, that you'd be the right person to start a new relationship with, you know, with that page of wands. They really have a lot of optimism. They feel like a kid again in your presence, you know. There is a difference, you know, between the two of you with regards to your maturity level. But uh, mostly I feel like um, they view you as somebody who is, uh, despite being this queen, in being a mature person, you've got this like beguiling innocence about you that they're attracted to and they feel like they have a lot that they can learn from you. They feel like you can learn a lot from them as well. So this does speak about the early stages of, of a connection. They're, they're taking the optimistic attitude after coming out of this connection here where they feel a lot of fear and heavy energy with this third party. They feel the opposite of that with you. Like you bring optimism and a better attitude to them. That you're a positive influence on them can make them feel like a kid again. Maybe they make you feel like a kid again as well. So when they do approach you uh, about taking it to the next level with you, um, 
it will be done in like an innocent and playful way. This person will be open and honest with you and have an optimistic attitude with you because they do really like you here. Um, I like you. <clears throat> someone likes uh, someone likes you. Romance is blooming. There's fun. There's flirting. They want to take you out on a date. Um, they know that they've hurt you with the grief card in reverse. So it'd be worse if the grief card were upright. With it being reverse, I think that just sort of supports this apology card coming out that they know that they need to apologize for something. And, you know, I feel like that apology is about, you know, the fact that this connection has not ascended or not moved up because they're involved with this other person, this third party that's weighing them down. And that they're taking their sweet time in getting out of and wrapping up. Because, you know, like, a person like you doesn't have to wait for anybody. You know, if you're, you're Queen of Wands energy, you're very um, attractive energy, like I said. And they know that with you, that they can have a passionate, romantic connection. <clears throat> and that you guys can share a lot of love and loyalty between the two of you. And that, that's what you deserve. That's how they're seeing you. You know, that you're a wise person, and you're a good person, and you have a generous nature, you're very confident and encouraging, and, you know, they you deserve so much more than being put in a third-party situation where you've been hurt and, and where they've done something to you that, you know, for which they feel that, you know, they need to apologize. So I think this is the best reading out of um, all three readings that I did today regarding, you know, uh, the outcome in terms of whether or not you're going to, um, be with, be with your love interest versus the third party, whether or not they're going to choose you, whether or not you're going to be together. I feel like this is, has the most potential. Because this person seems to know what they did and they don't want to victimize you again. They don't want to be victimized by this third party, but they also don't want to do anything to, to, to harm your connection as well. They want to make up to you whatever they did do to you that hurt you. And um, they want to help you. Uh, they might even want some help with you through this challenging situation um, that they're going through currently. I mean, maybe you can, you're a very wise person. Maybe you can advise them in some way that helps them to avoid doing anything risky in this situation that could give them or cause a destruction that they, that they so fear. But there's, like I said, it's unrealistic to think that there's not going to be any destruction or losses from a breakup like this. But yeah, they could come to you for some, some advice. It's up to you whether or not you want to give them that advice, but I feel like their feelings for you are very sincere and, um, that they are going to leave this third party and have a, a new relationship or a new phase of the relationship with you. So. Yeah, they're moving out of this third party situation and they want to date you. They want to start something with you. So I, I got an, uh, a card from the Ask Your Guides deck and your card is um, Solitude, Higher Self, so I'm going to read from the book on that. The book's really good. I like the advice that it gives. You know, if you want to, you can hang on and watch that. Otherwise, you can click off now. If you are going to click off, please do hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and hit the bell notification to receive notifications when I upload a new video. But um, otherwise, I am going to read from that book if I can find it. Wow, it literally got up and walked away. <sighs> okay, well, fast forward through this part because I can't find the book that I just had one second ago. <clears throat> Here it is. Okay, so solitude, number 13. So n lucky number 13, that might be a number of significance for you. Breaks down to a number four, might be somebody's life path. Number 14, or 13 rather. Solitude, higher self. So your guys um, say to you, option three, your desire to seek solitude is appropriate at this time. You're being counseled by your higher self to retreat and to renew your soul through quiet contemplation. Your nervous system has been overstimulated and you can't absorb any more input from the outside world. Step away and give yourself the necessary peace and time alone. You are required to revitalize your system. In doing so, you'll begin to sense, feel, and even hear the voice of your higher self, but only when you step into more natural surroundings. Reconnect with nature in whatever way is practical, given your circumstances. Fully open your heart to your higher self, even if you fear that you can't make contact. You are 
making contact. Furthermore, your higher self asks you to take your time when contemplating your circumstances and considering your options. Resist the temptation to yield to any sense of urgency. There is no emergency. Your true direction will make itself known if you are patient. Your higher self also alerts you to the fact that not all necessary pieces of inf information to make the best decisions may be apparent yet. Your higher self wisely counsels that sometimes the most powerful thing you can do is to do nothing. The message is, be quiet and wait. So that's your message from your guides option three. So take it, you know, take it how you will. And best wishes with this connection. Looks, it's, like I said, it's the best one of the three readings I did today on this topic. So if you'd like a personal reading, I am taking a limited number of personal readings to book. You can look at the description box below for details on how to book. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.